you describe a, a, a small eye which you feel needs to be dropped or got rid of in order to experience the freedom of your true nature. So there, there really isn't a small eye and a real eye. That there is only one eye and it is the eye of infinite consciousness. And what each of us experiences as a finite mind revolving around a finite eye is simply a limitation on that infinite consciousness. So the small eye has no reality of its own. It borrows its reality from the true and only eye of infinite consciousness. So there is no question of getting rid of the ego or getting rid of the small eye, as if the eye, small eye was an entity in its own right that could be got rid of or that should be got rid of. The ego, the small eye, the separate self, is simply an imaginary limit superimposed on infinite consciousness. So, instead of feeling that you have to get rid of the small I, think and feel instead in terms of seeing the reality of the I that you feel yourself to be. When you feel I, and all of us feel I, I is that around whom all experience revolves. It is always I that am having experience. So, don't try to get rid of that I. Don't condemn that I. Be interested in its nature, in its reality. Explore it. Now, who or what is going to explore I? Well, obviously, I am. The mind is going to explore its own reality. The mind turns the knowing that it normally directs towards objects. It turns that knowing on itself. Knowing investigates the knowing with which experience is known. Who am I? I am asking who am I? And in doing so, the mind is, as it were, led on a, it's like a journey, deeper and deeper into itself which is like uh, the fading of the image on the screen that I mentioned last night. As an image, there are a multiplicity and diversity of colors and shapes. Each form is limited and separate from the other. All the people in, and objects in the landscape are distinct and separate. But as the image fades, the everything that separates them begins to fade with them. The distinctions get less and less and less until when the image has faded completely, their reality, the indivisible screen, shines. In fact, it was always shining, but it was obscured by the apparent multiplicity and diversity of images and objects. So it's, it's the same here. Our experience seems to comprise a multiplicity and diversity of objects and people known by a separate subject. And our experience appears in accordance to our knowledge of the nature of that separate subject. As a man is, so he sees. So to know what anything is out there, we have to know the nature of the self in here, if indeed it is in here. When we start investigating that self, we don't find a self in the body. We find this open, empty presence of awareness in which the body and its world arise, with which it is known and out of which ultimately it is made.